personally conducted tour of the museum for the day starting immediately. The finest collection of occult and supernatural manifestations ever gathered beneath one roof. Lectures on werewolfism, vampirism and voodooism. Hear for yourselves the amazing story of the long lost Marie Latour. Dr. Charles Morris, the renowned director of this museum, has devoted his life to gathering this authentic material. Now, if you will kindly follow me, ladies and gentlemen, please keep as close together as possible. There's much to be seen, more to be heard, and plenty to imagine. Everyone is familiar with the legend of vampirism, how the victim exists on after death, seeking out some new victim each night, insatiable for the blood of mortals. This room is modeled upon an ancient description of some vampire's nest. In such a place as this, the infamous victims rested during the daylight hours, rising at dusk to seek out some new victim to appease their craving for human blood. The skeleton in the coffin here illustrates the prescribed method of doing away with a vampire. A wooden stake is driven through the vampire's heart while the creature sleeps in some dank cabin during the daylight hours. We will now proceed to the voodoo room. Uh, may I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen, please? As you will notice, this room is reserved for the mysteries of the voodoo. These are all actual photographs, enlarged to show some of the mysterious practices of this strange cult. These pictures were all taken by Dr. Morris on one of his many expeditions to the West Indies, where voodooism is widely practiced by some of the natives. Here is a real-life photograph of a mysterious rite. By some strange power, the soul of one human being is projected into the body of another. Sometimes this exchange is made between humans and animals. The secret of this mysterious rite has never been disclosed, but here is actual photographed evidence that the practice really exists. Dr. Morris actually witnessed this extraordinary rite. He carried with him a hidden camera. Had it been discovered, Dr. Morris would have been killed. Ladies and gentlemen, photographs do not lie. Follow me, please. You will observe evidence showing that the former occupant of this room was a woman of rare refinement and unique taste. Everything has been kept just as it was on the day she disappeared, a red-letter day in the life of her family. A woman of mystery. She was the mistress of this house, and her name was Marie Latour, and she was a werewolf. The tradition of werewolves and vampires dates back almost to the world's earliest recorded history. Of the two, the werewolf is perhaps the most horrible because the instinct for evil is so strong that they willingly and cunningly assume the shape of a beast in order to kill. It was during these times that farmers complained of seeing a wolf with flashing eyes that killed their cattle and sheep. Every effort was made to track the creature down, but it was George Latour who learned the truth at last. He discovered the muddy footprints of an animal leading to his house. He followed them to his wife's room. The servants upstairs, hearing screams, rushed up and found their master's mangled body. Over him stood a terrible animal with flaming, dripping jaws. This creature, seeing them, turned and fled through a window. Ladies and gentlemen, that creature, that thing, was Marie Latour. She's never been seen from that day to this. No one knows what became of her. This room has been kept just as she left it. The clock on the mantel there has never struck the hour since. The hands are stopped on the exact moment she struck her husband down. Well, you've heard her story, seen her effects. Now, here is her picture. Ladies and gentlemen, Marie Latour. Well, that's the signal for the closing of the museum. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Please tell your friends about us. Good night. Good night. Good evening, Jan. Come in. What is it, Jan? I wanted to ask you if I might leave early tonight, Dr. Morris. Peter said he would lock up for me. Oh, that'll be all right, Jan. 
I expect to be working late tonight myself. Thank you, sir. No, no, I will break bread with you later when I've delivered my message to the princess. So, Comrade Spavero, you have come at last. We are expecting you. Greetings, old one. I came as soon as I could. I have news for the princess. Enter. Here is Jan Spivero, princess. He says he has news. Tell me your news. Is it good or bad? The news is not good, my princess. And out with it, Dawdler. Bad news does not improve with keeping. The secret of your mother's grave is known. Dr. Morris at the museum has found it. What? He has done it. does this happen? Only last week, my princess. No one but he knows it, as yet. He's preparing a manuscript, a book, the life story of... You needn't say any more. The life story of the Latours will never be told by an unbeliever. To that I give oath. Dr. Morris's manuscript will never be published. Yes, my child. Your future is written. Your path is plain. You will follow it. The last personally conducted tour of the museum for the day, starting immediately. Lectures on werewolfism, vampirism and voodooism. Hear for yourselves the amazing story of the long-lost Marie Latour. Now, if you'll kindly follow me, ladies and gentlemen, please keep as close together as possible. There's much to be seen, more to be heard, and plenty to imagine. Going to meet Bob, Miss Elsa? Yes, his plane is due in half an hour. Well, I'll certainly be glad to see him. We all will. Ready, Dr. Morris? Oh, oh hello, Elsa. The plane's, the plane's on time, then. Uh-huh, 9.57. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to send you to the airport alone. Something rather important will keep me here. But, Dr. Morris, you haven't seen Bob for nearly a year. No. He'll be terribly disappointed. It's only a matter of minutes, an hour at most. When he finds you waiting for him, he won't even miss his father. Oh, you know that isn't so. Bob only thinks of me as his sister. <laughs> Should I give the young man a talking to? Oh, no. No, he mustn't think that I... What's the matter? There. There on the desk. Where did you get that? It's a devil doll. Yes, it's a devil doll. You recognize it, Elsa? It isn't like the ones we have in the voodoo room. This one uh, is from the old country, I should judge. Yes, I know. I saw one like that in my village when I was a little girl. It was always a warning. A warning of death. Yes, I know. I found it here when I got back from dinner. <laughs> but it's nothing to be upset about. Obviously, it was... Uh, left here as a joke or, or perhaps a contribution to the museum. Dr. Morris, is someone threatening your life? I hardly think so, but I'm not quite sure yet. I'm on the verge of a most interesting discovery, a discovery to answer a lot of unanswered questions. It may even have something to do with this, but I hardly think so. Anyway, I'll know for certain tonight. Whom are you phoning? The police. No, Elsa, this is a matter for science. Not for the police. But, Dr. Morris, if someone is threatening your life... For 30 years, I've built towards something like this, and I'm just selfish enough to want all the credit for the discovery, if it is a discovery, for myself. 
Well, all right. What do you want me to tell Bob, then? Tell him I had a most important engagement that couldn't possibly wait. I might almost call it a rendezvous with fate. Tell him it has something to do with why I sent for it. Oh, now, now be a good girl and go along, or you'll miss the plane. All right, Doctor. I'll do as you say. I'll be waiting for you both with news, great news, when you get back. still here, Peter. I, I thought you'd gone. I couldn't go till I'd fed Minnie, sir. She's been acting up, hiding on me. I couldn't find her. Because she's getting scared of her own shadow. Maybe she listens to your lectures. <laughs> you know, sometimes I begin to believe some of that stuff myself. A lot of it's true. Well, good night, Peter. Don't forget to lock the front door. Come on, sir. Good night. Dr. Morris. Dr. Morris, where are you? Answer me. Dr. Morris. Dr. Morris, where are you? Answer me. Hey, Dad, I'm back. Dad. Well, he's not here. But he must be somewhere about. There's a fresh fire on the grate. Oh, look, Bob. I'm sure those are pages from your father's manuscript. Well, so what? Dad isn't the first author to burn the stuff he's written. I wonder where he can be. Take me record on it. No one has left this house unless he went out the back way. But Elsa said he spoke of having a very important engagement. And the way he talked, the appointment was here in the museum. Yes, and the doctor would never go out the back way. Besides, what's become of Peter? He's not here either. You think I should turn in the alarm? No, let's give the building a thorough going over first. I'd feel pretty silly if he were here all the time. Mm -hmm. Shh. I think I hear something. Sounds like it's in there. As much as we know, nothing was touched until you arrived. Then you say, Miss Chevet, that 
The fire wasn't burning when you talked to Dr. Morris. No, it was not. He also poured water on it, trying to save what was left of Dad's notes. I'm afraid it didn't save much. Yes, it looks like they're past restoring. Any idea what was in them? I think so. Dad was writing a history on Marie Latour. I believe these were his reference notes. A week ago, he wired me, asking me to come home. He hinted it was something important, but he didn't go beyond that. Now, Miss Chauvet, you say that Dr. Morris told you he was on the verge of an important discovery. Yes. And you think it has something to do with a woman that used to live in this house, a woman who's supposed to be a vampire or something? Marie Latour, yes, he was a werewolf. Oh, yes, a werewolf. Mr. Morris, you're a scientist. Tell me the truth. Do you believe any of that silly stuff? I don't know, Lieutenant. As a scientist, I'm only supposed to believe that which can be proven in the laboratory. My father was killed here tonight under strange and desperate circumstances. I think maybe he knew something about some of that silly stuff. Well, of course, when the coroner's jury gets a medical report that death was caused by the attack of an animal or animals unknown, they're not going to point to anything supernatural. But, Lieutenant, no ordinary animal deliberately set fire to those notes. I'll admit there are some peculiar things about this case that haven't been cleared up. We'll keep our eye on that guide in case his mind clears and we can ask him some questions, but the police department hasn't got time to chase a lot of things that don't exist. I never heard of a wolf that could strike a match. Here's that devil doll you were telling me about. Where did you find it? It was with the body. The boys have stopped digging in that secret passage, Lieutenant. They can't find nothing. I guess that's about all we can do till the inquest. I'll leave a man on guard for a few days. Oh, do you mind? Well, speaking. Okay, I'll be right over. Have to go over to the police laboratory. I'll see you both later. Come on, Homer. Hey, Chief. You gonna call the boys off the case? Not now, Homer. Looks like you're in for a little detective work. No kidding. Yeah, there's more here than meets the eye. What do you mean by that? That phone call was from Pinky over in the lab. They found a woman's fingerprints all over that secret door on the inside. Yeah? Can you tell what they are? Are these really the hairs that were from the dead man's hand? That's what the doc says. He found them under the fingernails. Well, as near as I can figure out, they came from the body of a wolf. That makes you happy? Well, maybe it does. Maybe we've been underrating a certain young lady. Homer, wire for a rush answer on those fingerprints. And we're going over to the museum and have a talk with Miss Elsa Chauvet. We can't have any doors or windows open. The slightest breath of air will crumble those pages into powder. Can you stand it? I'll go without breathing if it'll help find out who killed your father. You may have to. Look. See what I mean? This is going to be tough. Inside this burnt heap of paper is the answer to what we want to know. To what your father was seeking. And... Oh, Bob, it frightens me to think of what we might find out. Ah, we'll cross that little bridge when we come to it. Right now, I'm only interested in getting this old machine together. Do you really think that it can photograph the, the letters on burnt paper? Well, if we can get those charred pages to stay in one piece long enough. You know, it's amazing what infrared can do. Well, I make sure she's here, I'll give you the high sign from the porch. Hey, Chief, uh, give me that again. I'm supposed to go to her apartment and pick out something with her fingerprints on it. Yeah, her passport. The girl was born in Europe, so she's got to have a passport. The fingerprints are on it. I get it. She was born in Europe, then. Miss Chauvet inside? Yes, Lieutenant. Mr. Morris, too. The rest of the help are down in DA's office answering questions. Good. Hey. I wish you'd knock before you come barging into a laboratory that way. When you opened that door, you scattered a full page of Dad's notes into a million pieces. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were working on something. I just dropped by to tell you I got a new lead. You mean you're not going to close the case? 
That's right. There's too many questions that haven't been answered. For instance, how did a woman's fingerprints get on the inside of that secret panel in the Marie Latour room? A woman's fingerprints? Yeah, we're checking them now. Am I interfering with your work? No, not at all. Say, Bob, what is your job in Washington? Chemical research for the government. That's fine, Elsa. Just, just touch the brush to the edges. Then only the little pieces will break off when you take it away. Miss Chauvet, where did you say you were born? In Transylvania. A little village in the mountains named Ongvar. And did they have werewolves in Transylvania? Well, there were many legends about werewolves. I never actually saw any, although there were people in my village who claimed they had seen them. Where did you meet Dr. Morris? He came to our village to investigate the background of Marie Latour. My father was magistrate there. He asked Dr. Morris to bring me to America. He said there would be a lot of trouble in Europe. How long ago was that? Seven years ago. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Do you think maybe Elsa's a werewolf in her spare time? Oh, no, I was just thinking it's funny that that secret passage has been there all these years and nobody found it but Dr. Morris. Come in. You want another telephone, Lieutenant? I'll let you know when I find out about those fingerprints. Yeah. All right, Homer, just so you got it. Is Pinky checking those fingerprints against the ones we found inside that secret passage? Good. If they turn out the way I think they'll turn out, we can close this case in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah, I got an idea who did it. Come on out of there, you want to be carried out. Now, give it to me fast. What were you doing snooping around in that closet? I work here. I'm Jan Spavera, the janitor. Oh, yeah, I remember you. That's not the broom closet, Jan. What were you doing in there? Since what happened to Dr. Morris, I'm afraid. I heard the policeman come to answer the telephone, and I hid. That's a good way to attract suspicion. You been to the DA's office yet? All morning, I answer questions. Then I come here to do my work. Well, I guess you can go home. There's nothing to do around here for a while. This place is closed temporarily. Well, just a minute. Do you believe in werewolves? I... Well, there are legends, superstitions in my country. Transylvania? Yes. How did you know? Oh, it's my business to know. Go ahead. Yeah? What? Well, tell him to check him again. Those fingerprints have got to match. Pinky says they don't. You can't pin it on the Chauvet girl if the fingerprints don't jive. But she's the only woman that knew about that inside passage. Yeah, you don't have to tell me. We're right back where we were before. All right, I'll come over. You must be wrong, Pinky. You gotta be wrong. That girl is the only I legend. I know, Lieutenant, but all I can tell you is what the fingerprints show. They don't belong to the Chauvet woman. Well, let's have another look. Homer, pull down that shade. Yes, sir. All right. You can see for yourself. Prince on John. Hey, uh, what did I tell you? I never did think that nice girl could have done it. That nice girl could have had an accomplice, couldn't she? And I've got a pretty good idea who it was. He comes from the same country as a Chauvet girl. What are you going to do, Chief? What do you think? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, we've got two pages of slightly scrambled notes on these negatives. I'll take them home and develop them. At this rate, we'll have some real evidence in about six months. Yeah, let's call it a night. Wait until I get my purse. You don't think I'm silly in believing that there's something supernatural about your father's death, do you, Bob? I wouldn't be trying to restore Dad's notes if I did. So far, it's the only explanation that makes sense. Yes. If all this had happened in my home village, the people there, they would be sure of it. And I'm as convinced that your father made some startling discovery regarding Marie Latour, as I am that we're here together now. Elsa, I... 
I've been meaning to ask you, do you want to stay on at the museum? Oh, I hadn't thought that far ahead. Do you know that you just called me Elsa? Did I? Uh-huh. What happened to Sis? I had to check her off of the list. She grew up and became a very pretty girl named Elsa Chauvet. Oh, and what have you done about Elsa? Oh, I gave her two weeks to make up her mind. To do what? To come back to Washington with me as Mrs. Robert Morris. Oh, Elsa doesn't need two weeks. Her mind is made up right now. You mean you'll go with me? Anywhere in the world, darling. That's all I wanted to know. What am I waiting for? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Where are you, kitty? Here, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. There you are. So you got shot in, huh? Come on. Come on. There, now, is that better? You were kind of scared in there all along, weren't you? Okay. Professor, you're sure you didn't touch anything when you came in this morning? Not a thing, Lieutenant. I took one look and notified you. After I let the cat out, I never went near this room. I can believe it, Donegan. You were probably catching a little shut-eye. Oh, I've got insomnia, Lieutenant. You know that. I couldn't sleep if I wanted to. That don't keep you from trying. Well, boys, it looks like we got something to go on this time. Right, Homer? Huh? Uh, yeah, right, Chief. Hurry up, Pinky, and develop those pictures. Right. Whoever destroyed these notes put that handprint on the door. Whoever left the handprint killed Dr. Morris. Sorry, Miss Chevet, to debunk your little story about a werewolf being the killer. The real killer had hands and feet, and he walked with a limp. You believe that the janitor's... It's more than a belief, Miss Chevet. That handprint will prove that Jan Spavero is our man. Right, Piggy? Yeah. He must have had a lot of fun in here last night, tossing all his black confetti around. Well, you can call it fun if you want to, Piggy. But Spavero must have been pretty anxious to get rid of these notes. He put his head right into a nice little noose to do it. Let's go, boy. They will not find me. I swear it. The police are stupid. Not so stupid as the one who leaves his handprint behind him on the wall. And they will find you, Jan. They will find you and they will make you talk. No, no. No, no. I swear they will not. I shall go away and never come back. I've spoken with the elders of the tribe, Jan. They have decided. You promised that if I served you faithfully, my princess. The one keep promises you fools will bring the police down upon our heads. Silent, old one! Bianca! Leave us. This much I will promise you, Jan. You will lie with your ancestors in the ground selected by my mother. No. No!
child, weep. You cannot help the things that have been, or the things that must be. It is your destiny. You are our high priestess. The welfare of our tribe is in your keeping. It was ordained so by your mother, and she placed you in my care. You are the daughter of a werewolf. Daughter of a werewolf. I am the daughter of a werewolf. I like to keep my own private record of everything pertaining to a case. My wife pasted them in a scrapbook. Then I got something to show my kids. What makes you think that Timberwolves or some drunken farmer thinks he saw have got anything to do with this case? Well, Dr. Morris was killed by an animal or animals unknown, wasn't he? Or by a certain Jan Spivero who tried to make it look like the work of an animal. I know it's Stephen Peggy. Yeah? Speaking. You did? Where? I'll be right over. Come on. They've located Spivero. Oh, boy, have I got some questions to ask oh, him. Oh, I forgot to tell you, he's over at the morgue. Ripped to death by a wolf. One more question, Princess. Did you have any knowledge that this man, Spivero, was wanted by the police when he came to you begging the hospitality of your tribe? As has been told you, Jan Spivero was not a member of our tribe. His identity was discovered a day after he'd been with us. When he was told that he must go, he protested his innocence, but he left. The next we knew of him was when he was found dead. That'll be all, Princess. You were excused. Thank you. One moment, please, Princess. Mr. Morris wishes to ask you a few questions for general information. I have here, Princess, certain notes that my father had made in preparing a book. They're rather fragmentary, but you may be able to help me piece them together for whatever bearing they might have on the case. The notes refer to a certain tribe of gypsies called the Troiga. Have you ever heard of such a tribe? That's the name of my tribe, Mr. Morris. Is it true that your people are bound together by tradition and belief, that they'll be together in death as well as in life? There are many things about my people which may seem strange to you. We do believe that death will bring us together and keep us together eternally. For 11 months, my people roamed the roads and country lanes of this land, selling toys and trinkets. Then, at this season of the year, they gather from everywhere to meet and mingle together, to break the bread of friendship with one another, to court new sweethearts, to marry, to, to christen their babies and to bury their dead. Burying your dead once a year. Is that one of the superstitions of your people? What you call superstition, we call religion. I see. I wonder if you do. Why does your tribe always return to this particular place, Princess? It's tradition. In some countries, the body is burned. In our treasured ground, it is buried, but only on the twelfth month, during the Feast of Life and Death. Has that tradition existed only since Marie Latour joined the Troiga tribe, Princess? Marie Latour? Yes. My father traced her to your tribe. It's here in his notes. Have you never heard of her? Marie Lat Was she a member of your tribe? Mm. Ah. The meeting is recessed. Sir, Adamson and Sons are at your service. I'd like to speak to Mr. Adamson or one of the Sons. Mr. Adamson is dead. I am the last of the Sons. Is this a professional call? Well, not exactly. The, the name is Morris. I'm doing some research on a gypsy tribe called the Troiga. I'm told that they ship their dead here and then the living members gather from all over the country about this time of year for one great funeral. True, true, Mr. Morris. 
We have refrigerated vaults in the basement, and the deceased are kept there until the time for the funeral. Would you excuse me a moment while I switch off the electric organ? You uh, probably have records of when this temporary burial practice began. Records of the early gypsy families. I wonder if I might see them. You see, I'm looking for a certain woman known to have joined the tribe many years ago. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. Professional ethics. The Traeger are, are very secretive. They send us their dead. We keep them. On ice, of course. And then they come and take them away. Those old records are stored in the basement. No one is allowed to see them. Do you know, I myself am not certain where the Traeger gypsies finally bury their dead. I believe they have some sort of secret burial ground. Oh, I'll have to leave you now. Someone's being delivered at the service entrance. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help to you. If you care to wait, I'll give you what information I can. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. You're very kind. Good, good, Mr. Morris. I'll be back soon. Just make yourself at home. Books, magazine. What a coincidence. Some of the Troiga gypsies are here now. Speak of the devil. <laughs> Sitare, Princess. Who is it this time? A dear comrade, Jan Spivero. Jan Spivero. Uh, speaking of names, your tribe is attracting quite a bit of scientific interest. Yes, there's a young man here now asking about the history and customs of the Traiga. It seems he's doing some research. What's his name? Uh, Morris. Yes, that's it. Mr. Morris. I never forget a name. I can't remember faces, but I never forget a name. You say he's here now? Yes. Yes, he asked to see the records of the dead from your tribe. Naturally, I refused, but he's waiting. I promised to do all I could for him. Oh, oh that's all right. You can leave it there. I'll take care of Mr. Spavero. Please, Mr. Adamson, not so loud. What's that? Oh, nothing. There's nobody here but myself. Mr. Morris is in the reception room. I should like very much to meet Mr. Morris. Fine. He's quite an interesting character. He talks a lot. Uh, we'll have to go up front anyway to sign the papers. I know Mr. Morris will be delighted. Such an earnest young man, so eager. Oh, Mr. Morris. Oh, I say. Hello. Where is Mr. Morris? Mr. Morris, have you gone? Isn't that strange? He said specifically he would wait.
Mr. Morris, I've been looking all over for you. Have you, Princess? Yes. I had difficulty finding you. I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. I've been spending some very interesting moments. Mr. Adamson tells me you're here trying to learn more about our tribe. That's right, I... I find your customs completely fascinating, Princess. Well, perhaps I could help you to understand them better. Perhaps. There you two are. And chatting just like old friends. My, my. Thought you both had gone. We were just going, Mr. Adamson. If Mr. Morris will drive me back to camp, I promise to tell him many things about the customs of my tribe. You're very kind, Princess. That's much more than I expected. It isn't kindness, Mr. Morris. It's because I like you. Anyone who finds the customs of my people fascinating, I find them fascinating, too. You like to look at me. Mm. Was I looking at you? You think I'm beautiful, perhaps? Like you say, easy on the eyes? Well, if you put it that way, yeah. Mr. Morris, we can be friends. Okay. Please call me Celeste. Celeste. Bob? Well, that does make it a little less formal. Bob, you're a little afraid of me. No. Should I be? A woman likes to have a man a little afraid of her. Who was that pretty girl at the inquest? Elsa Chauvet. She's in love with you. I hope so. Are you in love with her? We're going to be married as soon as I go back to Washington. I wonder if she realizes how fortunate she is. Was there anything to stop you from being that fortunate? I wish I could tell you, but I can't. Bob, is that you? Oh, darling, I was so worried. I was just this minute dialing the police. Tell me what happened. Did you learn anything new at the mortuary? Oh, no, not as much as I wanted to. What took you so long? Well, I ran into that whole gang of gypsies at Adamson's. Celeste was there. Celeste? Yeah, the gypsy princess. As a matter of fact, she, she asked me to drive her home, and I did. You drove her to the gypsy camp? Yeah, I stayed for tea, too. It was very interesting. She, she told me a lot of things about herself and her tribe. Did you know that the Troiga tribe has one of the few forms of matriarchal inheritance left in the world? You know, where they pass the title from mother to daughter instead of father to son. Blood to blood, they call it. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's true. Celeste told me. She inherited her title from her mother. Celeste. Well, that's her name, darling. She asked me to call her that and, instead of princess. But I don't understand... At the inquest this morning, you were convinced that there was some connection between these gypsies and your father's death. And now, you act as though that suspicion was the farthest thing from your mind. Darling, what has come over you? Nothing. It's just now that I've met and talked with the gypsies, I'm, I'm convinced they're simple, harmless people. They may have strange customs and secrets, yes, but, well... I'm not going to run around and make wild accusations against innocent people. Maybe there's some things we just don't understand. I'm as certain that that gypsy girl is evil as I am that I breathe. Oh. Deep in my heart, I know. And I'm afraid. Afraid of what it'll do to us. To you. Oh, darling, you take things too seriously.
This, I think, is yours. It explains a great deal. Why, well, you've hardly eaten a bite. I wasn't very hungry tonight, Wayman. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good evening, Elsa. Hello, Mac. If you're looking for Bob, he just drove off in his car about ten minutes ago. Oh, thank you. I didn't expect to meet Bob. I came back to do a little work. Now, why don't you give up this night? You're too nice a girl not to be out having a good time for yourself. There's plenty of time to go to work when you get as old as I am. Oh, thank you, Mac. There are some jobs I can't wait until we're older. If you could speak, Marie Latour, you could tell me what I want to know. What is this evil power? Where does it come from? I know that it exists and that it's here, in this house. Admiring my mother's portrait? Your mother? Marie Latour? I should have guessed it. Of course you should. Think of the time and trouble you would have saved putting Dr. Morris's notes together. You've been so eager to learn the truth about my mother, Miss Chauvet. To reveal the secrets of the Troy Eager tribe she fled to when she left this house so many years ago. Such persistence must not go unrewarded. To you shall be revealed all these secrets. You shall be my sister. It is in my power. What is it? Are you remembering Dr. Morris's torn body? Or do you see Peter Althea's horror-filled face, shocked into madness by a sight his eyes never should have seen? Do not fear that, my sister. Yours shall be a better fate. I shall teach you a new worship, a new religion. Your first sacrifice upon its altar will be the faith of the man you love. Since I am forbidden to love him, so shall you be. Bob. Bob. You will learn to live as I must live. Apart. Beyond the reach of men and mortals. And for that love which once shone in a man's eyes. Loathing will be substituted. You shall be feared and hated. When you awaken, you too shall be the daughter of a werewolf. Fancy meeting you here. How'd you get shut up in there? Elsa. Elsa.
Elsa. Elsa. What's the matter? What's happened? Are you still looking for the person who killed your father? Yes, of course, but... Stay away from me. I killed Dr. Morris. I killed him. What are you saying? I killed him. I killed... Don't come near me. Don't touch me. I killed him. Don't touch me. I killed him. I tell you, she's been hypnotized, bewitched, down in that basement room. I'm no psychiatrist, I'm only a policeman. If she says she killed your father, I've no choice but to take her in. The rest is up to the jury. Look, Lieutenant, you're dealing with the supernatural. Oh. I tell you, that Celeste woman is a devil, a demon. Those gypsies can cast a spell on you. I know it. It happened to me. It, it was like being drugged. I killed Why, him. I even tried to convince Elsa that Celeste was all right, and that she and her tribe were sweet, innocent people. Well, they're not. They're devil worshippers. And they've got a secret all right in the basement of this house. I just phoned Dr. Phillips. He said to give her a set of them and he'll be here in 15 minutes. Stay away from me. I killed him. All right, give her a couple of these. You may be right. I got men posted all over the house and we go down and give that secret chamber a real going over. Like the professor said, whoever did this may still be in the house. Come on. Don't come near me. Hey, Chief, uh, ain't you supposed to have some sort of a silver bullet or some other hocus-pocus to kill a werewolf? Well, it'll make you feel any better. We can take the silver fillings out of our teeth and melt them into a bullet. Yeah, okay. Okay. Come on. Hey, what happened? Who hit that light switch? Not, Not me. me. Nobody touched it. Touch it. Ed, go ask young Morris where the fuse box is. All right. Hey, the lights are out all over the place. Go do what I tell you. All by myself? Will you? Okay. Hey, Chief, don't you think we ought to wait until we get the little matter of the fuses straightened out? What's the matter with you guys? What do you got a flashlight for? This will have to hold you till I have a look at them fuses. How's the little lady feeling? She's resting. Good. You stick with her, Professor, because if there's any zombie ghost in this place, we'll get him. Or her. Or it. Thanks. Elsa. Elsa, are you awake? found up there some sort of a secret crypt chief there's a grave there's somebody buried up here is he dead 
Yeah, only it ain't a he. It's a woman, some sort of gypsy queen. Well, now that you've crept into a crypt, would you mind creeping back down here again? We're looking for a live gypsy, not a dead one. Hurry it up. Okay, Chief, okay. But now that I'm up here, don't you want me to look around a bit? Do you hear anything? Nah, not a thing. What would you hear in a grave? Look out! There she is! Cover the exits and watch all the windows. <laughs> You all right, Chief? Well, it's nice of you to inquire. I didn't know you cared. What are you doing up there? You mean to tell me you didn't see what we saw? How can I see anything when you're raining bullets on me like I was a sleeve target? Come on down! You think the Chief will believe us when we tell him what we saw? Well, you believe us all right when I show him this. Flashlight's dark and aim at its eyes. We got it trapped. I think we hit it, Chief. Listen. That's it. Now stay beside me and we'll move in together. Take it slow. There it is. Oh! My sister. They're trying to kill her, aren't they? Sir. They're trying to hurt her. They're trying to kill her. Look at that. Hit it, all right. Ah. Hey, Chief, to the door! Come on! I don't think it's in here, Chief. Al, you search that room. I'll try this one. Homer, take a look upstairs. Yeah. sister. The wounds, they burn, do they not? You're trapped, Celeste. You might as well give up. Come, Elsa. We must go build ourselves another temple. The old one has been desecrated. that gun down, Elsa. This is my voice, Elsa. My voice says kill him. Don't listen to her, Elsa. Don't listen to her. Kill him. Listen to me. This is Bob talking. Put that gun down, Elsa. Kill him. Put that gun down, Elsa. Don't listen to her. Use your own will, Elsa. It's all over with. Nothing can harm you now. Say, I had the darnest time finding that fuse box. I had... Hey! What happened here? 
Well, Ed, I never thought I'd be giving lectures on werewolves to guys like you who won't believe it anyway because you were off somewhere fixing fuse boxes. But we're looking at a real phenomenon. An ancient legend come true, Ed, right before our eyes. That wolf used to be a beautiful gypsy girl, a princess who worshipped evil. You can tell your grandchildren about it, Ed. You can say I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah.